On the broadcast here tonight, deadly quake. A strong earthquake strikes in the middle of the night in Italy. Tonight, the rising toll of dead and injured and the growing number of those left homeless. The honored, for the first time in 18 years, the images were allowed to see of the homecoming of an American killed in war. Meltdown, a 25-mile-long ribbon of ice has broken at the bottom of the world, and there's a disturbing new warning about what's to come. And making a difference, communities acting locally, not waiting for Washington for an economic boost. Nightly News begins now. NBC News World Headquarters in New York. This is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. It happened in the middle of the night before some of the victims knew what it was. It was, it turns out, the worst and deadliest earthquake in three decades to strike in Italy, and it shook the mountainous central region of the country. It claimed a lot of lives, and it crumbled a lot of medieval history in just seconds. As of tonight, it's believed over 150 are dead, over 1,500 injured. More than 50,000 people are feared displaced. It measured a 6.3 and was believed centered near the town of L'Aquila. That's where our own Stephanie Goss begins our reporting tonight. Stephanie, good evening. Good evening, Brian. Well, this quake was the deadliest quake in 30 years, and its epicenter struck a town that knows only too well how much force they can have. This city has been destroyed twice before by earthquakes. It was 3.32 when the quake struck this morning, the tremor lasting just 30 seconds. But in that flash, entire blocks of buildings in L'Aquila, a 13th century fortress town, were leveled. One eyewitness said the quake sounded like a bomb going off. Last night was like the end of the world. The building was rocking. You couldn't walk. This man, dazed, pulled from the rubble after a three-hour rescue effort, broke down in tears. <laughs> Using bare hands to dig and ladders to carry the injured, 4,000 rescue workers are trying to reach the trapped. At least 150 people are dead and 1,500 injured. But those numbers are expected to climb as reports come in of towns and villages entirely flattened and cut off by destroyed roads. Phone and power lines are down and gas mains ruptured. Everything is destroyed. Our house has gone. At least tens of thousands of people are homeless. And the government is racing to set up a tent city as well as medical field clinics. With L'Aquila's main hospital damaged, medical teams are treating the injured outside. The government appealed for help from doctors and nurses across Italy. L'Aquila, 60 miles northeast of Rome, flanked by the Apennine Mountains, lies on an active earthquake fault between the Eurasian and African plates in central Italy's Abruzzo region. The Apennines is uh, notorious for having destructive earthquakes. And this is not just because it's active, but also because these, uh, these towns are built primarily with stones. The area has many medieval and Renaissance castles and churches, and some have been seriously damaged. This used to be a four-story building with as many as 50 people inside. This morning, only three escaped with their lives. The rest of today, these workers have been pulling out bodies. Despite the numbing cold and the heavy rain, it is a moment like this keeping the rescue workers determined. A young man, Matteo, finally freed after hours of hard work. So far, at least 60 people have been rescued, but around L'Aquila tonight, family and friends are holding vigil, Brian. They're hoping that their loved ones will be next. Stephanie Gosk in Italy for us tonight, starting off our reporting this Monday. Stephanie, thanks. President Obama expressed his condolences to the victims of this Italian earthquake from Turkey, the final stop on his overseas trip. He went to Turkey in an effort to reach out in part to the Muslim world and speaking to that country's parliament, he declared the U.S., quote, is not and will never be at war with Islam. After first visiting the capital city of Ankara, the president is now in Istanbul, and our chief White House correspondent Chuck Todd is traveling with him. Chuck, good evening. Good evening, Brian, from a rainy Istanbul. And what could prove to be one of the shrewder early moves in this young presidency, Mr. Obama is choosing to close his first overseas trip here in Turkey to do two things, elevate the country's role in the world, and two, Prove to the Muslim world that he means what he says and is pledged to reach out, and he did it in a very personal way.
President Obama today paid tribute to Turkey's modern founding father, pausing to share reflections, <laughs> saluting Turkish soldiers, all a part of his campaign to win over the hearts and minds of the Muslim world. <laughs> and he brought it home at the Turkish parliament, a symbol of one of the world's largest Muslim democracies. Some people have asked me if I chose to continue my travels to Ankara and Istanbul to send a message to the world. And my answer is simple. Evet, yes. The president didn't have just one message, but several. There was the elevation of Turkey's place on the world stage. This is not where East and West divide. This is where they come together. Urging Turks to unite against Iran's nuclear ambitions. This part of the world has known enough violence. It has known enough hatred. It does not need a race for an ever more powerful tool of destruction. Pushing for Middle East peace and reminding this Muslim nation of his own Muslim ties. The United States has been enriched by Muslim Americans. Many other Americans have Muslims in their families or have lived in a Muslim-majority country. I know because I am one of them. Finally, offering reassurance. The United States is not and will never be at war with Islam. Because this is a volatile region, security is tight. Mr. Obama visibly flinched during a ceremonial cannon salute. Also missing from this leg of the trip, the crowds that came out to see the president in Europe. Here in Turkey, it's tougher to take that chance. The president, flying solo now, after wife Michelle flew home as scheduled to start the school week with her two daughters, is overnighting in Istanbul where tonight he had a private working dinner with key Turkish and Armenian leaders. Now, Brian, speaking of the Armenians, uh, the president sidestepped this controversial issue about whether Turkey should recognize in a way of calling, gen calling it genocide the slaughter of millions of Armenians during the fall of the Ottoman Empire in 1915. Tomorrow, he's going to meet with young college students here, which should be a very interesting meeting. All right, Chuck Todd in Istanbul for us tonight. Chuck, thanks. We have more on the Obama administration tonight and these massive financial bailouts of late. It was revealed this weekend the president's chief economic advisor, Larry Summers, earned nearly $8 million last year working for a hedge fund and giving speeches to financial institutions. And some of that money came from the very banks that have now been bailed out by taxpayers. The story tonight from our senior investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers. The president's economic advisor, Lawrence Summers, has long been considered an economic and intellectual heavyweight. We now know just how highly his advice is valued on Wall Street. Documents made public by the White House reveal that Summers received about $5.2 million last year from a hedge fund, D.E. Shaw, for what was described as a part-time job, offering advice and interacting with traders, clients, and investors. Summers also pulled down $2.7 million in speaking fees from big Wall Street firms, many which have since received bailout money, including more than $200,000 from Goldman Sachs and 99,000 from Citigroup. Some analysts see a problem in Summers' close financial ties to Wall Street. And the problem is that you become captured by the Wall Street perspective, by the bank's interests, and you lose the ability to give objective advice to the president. Critics say Summers and the Obama administration have been too willing to prop up big name Wall Street firms. Everybody's doing a great job representing the bank's interests, but not the taxpayers. Summers also has drawn criticism for comments on much. AIG uh, bonuses, which he called outrageous, but suggested initially were beyond the administration's reach. The government cannot just abrogate contracts. Still, Summers has a reputation for prickly independence. And while he once helped deregulate Wall Street during the Clinton years, he now is pushing for more regulation of hedge funds and Wall Street banks, which paid him those handsome fees. Today, a White House spokesman said Summers has exactly the blend of business and government experience and the know-how needed to fix this mess. And to be sure, it doesn't happen again. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Washington. Defense Secretary Robert Gates is recommending a deep slice into some major U.S. weapons programs. Among them, he would halt production of F-22 fighter jets, which cost 
$140 million each. He would also scrap plans to build a new fleet of helicopters for the president, as the president himself has suggested. He says he wants to shift priorities from fighting conventional wars to fighting the newer threats posed by insurgents in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. Meantime, for the first time since the first Bush administration, Americans are now able to see for themselves the solemn homecoming for a fallen member of the U.S. military. Air Force Staff Sergeant Philip Myers was killed by a bomb in Afghanistan on Saturday. Our Pentagon correspondent Jim Miklaszewski has our report. Late Sunday night in a somber military ritual at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, Staff Sergeant Philip Myers came home from the war. And it's the first time in 18 years the American people are able to see the ceremony. A demolitions expert who had earned a bronze star in Iraq, Myers was killed dismantling a roadside bomb in Afghanistan. His return was the first open to cameras since the Pentagon ended its ban against media coverage of these ceremonies. Defense Secretary Robert Gates lifted the ban. The overriding principle is that decisions about media coverage should be made by those most affected, the families. These ceremonies used to be wide open, as when President Reagan honored the 241 Marines killed in the Beirut bombing. That all changed in 1991 at the start of the Gulf War. The first President Bush banned all media coverage at Dover, and it's been upheld ever since. Critics claim the decision was strictly political, over fears that media coverage of mounting American casualties would turn the public against any U.S. war. The constant uh, exposure uh, to the thousands of killed and wounded, and I underscore wounded, uh, would decrease support for the war. But even out of public view, the military cared for America's war dead with the same dignity and precision of a full and open honor ceremony. Before lifting the ban, Secretary Gates went to Dover to see for himself. I went to the uh, back of the plane by myself and spent time uh, with each of the transfer cases. I think I'll stop there. Today, the Air Force gave Staff Sergeant Myers a second Bronze Star, another public tribute to one of America's fallen. Jim McLeshevsky, NBC News, the Pentagon. When Nightly News continues on this Monday night, big changes to report tonight on the environmental front, including how the map of the world changed just in these past few days. And later, what happens when a town is in trouble and doesn't want to wait on Washington for money? The solution is making a difference. I'm Bruce Johnson, and I'm an inventor. I was always congested at night, and that meant a bad night of sleep. I tried everything from padded paper clips to straws. Finally, one night I was laying in bed, and I thought, outside of the nose, not inside. Inside Breathe Right nasal strips are two plastic bands that lift open nasal passages so you breathe better and sleep better. My nasal passages stay open. And I can breathe really quite relaxed. If you have a cold, allergies, deviated septum, or snore, try Breathe Right, and you'll notice a difference. To stay in tune with life after 50, I switched to a complete multivitamin with more. Only one a day women's 50 plus advantage has ginkgo for memory and concentration, plus support for bone and breast health. Just what I need. One a day women's. Where's my car? Where's my car? Where are you? Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles with two different gels for softness and support are outrageously comfortable. Not too far. Are you gelling? Dr. Scholl's. I thought I knew all about high cholesterol. But then my doctor told me something I didn't know. While I was building my life, my high cholesterol was contributing to plaque buildup in my arteries. That's why my doctor prescribed Crestor. People everywhere are learning that plaque buildup is a real reason to lower high cholesterol and that Crestor can help. Along with diet, Crestor does more than lower bad cholesterol. It raises good. Crestor is also proven to slow the buildup of plaque in arteries. Crestor isn't for everyone, like people with liver disease or women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests will check for liver problems. You should tell your doctor about other medicines you're taking or if you have muscle pain or weakness, that could be a sign of serious side effects. Like others, while you've been building your life, plaque may have been building in your arteries. Find out more at Crestor.com. Then, ask your doctor if it's time for Crestor. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. 
Friday, Dateline's Unsolved Case Squad premieres. You have to follow the evidence where it takes you. A new team of forensic detectives brings their expertise to an unsolved crime. I want DNA evidence. Join the investigation. Study the evidence. It doesn't get much better than this. Premieres Friday, 10, 9 central on NBC. After a big budget defeat, is the GOP stranded in the political wilderness? Who's running this party? Countdown with Keith Oberman, tonight on MSNBC. The Obama administration is calling for greater protection of the Earth's polar regions, including limits on tourism. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton made the proposals at a global summit in Washington. Coincidentally, it comes two days after a crucial ice bridge collapsed at the South Pole, effectively changing the map of that part of the world. The story from our chief environmental affairs correspondent, Ann Thompson. From polar bears in the north to penguins in the south, thinning ice at the poles means more climate trouble for the planet. In the Arctic Ocean, a government report out today shows ice cover this winter was the fifth smallest on record. And the ice that's there was the thinnest ever. Ice accumulated over the years, the thick stuff marked in red on this map makes up a record low 10% of the ice cover. The orange area is first year ice, thin ice, the vast majority of this winter's ice cover and most susceptible to summer melting. It's not a matter of if we're gonna have an ice free ocean in the Arctic during the summertime, but when. Arctic ice acts as a reflector for the Earth, bouncing back heat and energy from the sun into space. Without the ice, the ocean absorbs the heat, raising temperatures that could speed the melt of land ice in Greenland and raise sea levels. At the bottom of the world, the ice bridge at Antarctica's Wilkins Ice Shelf collapsed over the weekend. Scientists feared the Wilkins, stable for much of the past century, could now break free. Good morning. Today, at an international meeting on polar issues, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said more must be done to protect these areas. With the collapse of an ice bridge that holds in place the Wilkins Ice Shelf, we are reminded that global warming has already had enormous effects on our planet, and we have no time to lose in tackling this crisis. It's a crisis that may seem far away, but the poles are like thermostats for the planet, and changes there could affect the weather everywhere people live. The science is telling us that we are actually in a much worse situation than we would think we would otherwise be. A situation made worse by man-made global warming that now needs a man-made solution. Ann Thompson, NBC News, New York. And when we continue along the way this Monday night, if there are big names on the mound, both before and during the game, then it must be opening day. Tired of morning coming in the middle of the night? It may be time for two-layer Ambient CR. The first layer dissolves quickly to help you fall asleep. And unlike other sleep aids, a second dissolves slowly to help you stay asleep. Until you know how Ambient CR will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Plan to devote seven to eight hours to sleep before being active. Sleepwalking and eating or driving will not fully awake with amnesia for the event have been reported. In rare cases, severe allergic reactions can occur. If you experience any of these behaviors or reactions, contact your doctor immediately. Side effects may include next day drowsiness, dizziness, and headache. It's non-narcotic and can be taken for as long as your prescriber recommends. Like most sleep aids, it has some risk of dependency. Don't take it with alcohol. Wake up ready for your day. Ask your health care provider for two-layer Ambient CR. works naturally to help lower cholesterol let it help lower yours bicycle i've missed you gathering dust as flowers bloom and pollen floats through the air while i sneezing itching eyes looked for safer havens in the air conditioning but now with the strength of 24 hours zyrtec to relieve my worst allergy symptoms indoors and outdoors i'll wipe off the dust that gathered these long months use zyrtec which starts working two hours faster than claritin and promise not to wait as long to go for our ride. Because with Zyrtec, I can love the air. This Easter, let your imagination take you away. Once upon a time. Travel back in time. Woo! 
journey to space and do it all before bedtime. Bedtime stories. Rated PG. A great Easter gift on Blu-ray DVD combo pack today. Hi. I just switched jobs and I want to roll over my old 401k into a Fidelity IRA. Okay, no problem. It's easy to get started. I can help you with the paperwork. Um... This green line just appeared on my floor. That's guidance from Fidelity. It's the route to your financial goals. Could you hold on a second? Whatever your destination, Fidelity has the people, guidance, and investments to help you find your way. This is going to be helpful. Contact us today. Fidelity Investments. Turn here. The families of the 13 victims of that shooting spree in upstate New York have started burying their loved ones. Memorial services took place yesterday and today in Binghamton. The gunman, Jiverly Wong, killed immigrants from eight different countries on Friday before taking his own life. His sister said on the Today Show this morning his family had no idea he was close to snapping. She said he was depressed about job loss and his limited ability to speak English. And we have something, thankfully, of a positive milestone to report tonight. U.S. highway deaths fell last year to their lowest level in nearly 50 years. Preliminary figures show just over 37,000 people died in motor vehicle accidents. That figure's an improvement. The theory here is the recession and $4 a gallon gasoline had people driving less in that period. The annual report on the quality of airline service in this country is out tonight. Improved is the key word here. In fact, the airlines overall scored their highest marks for service in four years. Smaller appears to have done better. Hawaiian Airlines was the top-rated carrier, followed by Discount Airlines, AirTran, that's formerly ValueJet, and JetBlue. Northwest was fourth, the only big traditional so-called legacy carrier, now part of Delta, to place it near the top of the list. The first day of baseball season has arrived, and that means ceremonial first pitches thrown by people who are, shall we say, beyond their prime playing years. Among the hurlers taking the mound today, the vice president threw out the first pitch in Baltimore as the Orioles hosted the New York Yankees this afternoon. And former President George W. Bush did the honors in Arlington, Texas, where the team he used to run, the Rangers, took on the Cleveland Indians. He threw what was described as a high strike. We'll be back in just a moment with communities pitching in to help each other in hard times. Tonight's Making a Difference report. My name is Jane, and I've got osteoporosis, but I'm an on-the-go woman. I've been active all my life. That's why I'm excited about Reclast, the osteoporosis treatment my doctor gives me once a year. My doctor says one IV of Reclast can help protect me while I'm on the go for 12 months. How? Well, Reclast helps to re-strengthen my bones to help make them resistant to fracture. And with Reclast, well, no other osteoporosis treatment is approved to help protect in more places. Hip, spine, even other bones. You should not take Reclast if you're on Zometa, have low blood calcium, kidney problems, or you're pregnant, plan to become pregnant, or nursing. Take calcium and vitamin D daily. Tell your doctor if you develop severe muscle, bone, or joint pain, or if you have dental problems, as rarely job problems have been reported. The most common side effects include flu-like symptoms, fever, muscle or joint pain, and headache. Do what I did. Ask your doctor about Reclast. Year-long protection for on-the-go women. When my allergies hit, I've got a great new way to hit back. I get Claritin Clear with new Claritin Liquid Gels, the first and only non-drowsy allergy medicine with pure liquid power. Claritin Liquid Gels, a powerful new way to live Claritin Clear. If you're like a lot of people, you have high blood pressure and you have high cholesterol, you've taken steps to try and lower both your numbers, but how close are you to your goals? There may be more you can do. Only Cataway combines two proven medicines in a single pill to significantly lower high blood pressure and high cholesterol. In a clinical study of patients with slightly elevated blood pressure and cholesterol, Cataway helped 48% reach both goals in just four weeks. Cataway is one of many treatment options in addition to diet and exercise that you can discuss with your doctor. Cataway is not for everyone. It's not for people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. To check for liver problems, you need simple blood tests. Tell your doctor about any heart problems and all other medications you are taking, or if you experience muscle pain or weakness, as they may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. How close are you to where you want to be? Ask your doctor if Cataway can help you go for both your goals. 
Anxious about quitting cold turkey? Make that first step easier with the Nicoderm CQ patch. Nicoderm steps you down from nicotine gradually, doubling your chance for success. Nicoderm CQ. Three steps, ten weeks, and you're free. Next on your one source for local news at 7. Developing right now, a brush fire forces families to evacuate their homes in southwest Miami-Dade. From hot to cold, details on tonight's drastic temperature change. From Iraq to the mound at Dolphin Stadium, the heartwarming start to opening day. And the custody battle that literally ruffled feathers in a courtroom. Those stories coming up next year at 7 o'clock. Making a Difference, brought to you by Nicoderm CQ. We're asking folks to keep sending us, keep posting on our website the stories you encounter of good news, acts of kindness for others in this bad economy. We enjoy telling the stories on the air, like this email we received from Teresa in Florida, who writes, A real estate developer and landlord in Sarasota is offering discounted or even free rent to businesses that will provide local jobs in an economy that has been extremely hard hit by foreclosures and job loss. I think he deserves to be making a difference. Where the national economy is concerned, this is a period of scramble and wait for the federal stimulus money that we know is on the way. But a lot of localities can't afford to wait for the money. They've launched efforts on their own, like a program in California that's making a difference. Our report tonight from NBC's Lee Cowan. Economically speaking, going local in Lancaster sounds pretty good. In this California city, if you hop on a new Harley or you drive off in a new Toyota, they will reimburse you this amount. The city will repay your registration fees in coupons to be spent at local businesses. I'll probably spend it on my grandkids. I always do. Like here at Giovanni's restaurant. It's like the community uh, reaching out to help each other. It's just one of a host of creative finance ideas hatched by Lancaster to pull itself up by its own economic bootstraps. Why? Washington is not going to pull us up out of anything. With unemployment here hovering at a whopping 15%, the city was growing impatient waiting for the federal so-called shovel-ready projects to create jobs. So instead, the city council came up with some of its own. It put contractors and engineers to work building a new city park and playground. And it bought and remodeled 100 foreclosed homes. Some are already back on the market. In Texas, the city of Carrollton tapped the Lone Star budget to create 200 local jobs. They're temporary, but for Trevin Brewer, it's something. Might move me into something a lot brighter instead of being in a dark cave. 16 states and at least 30 cities and counties are working on these mini new deals. Effective in the short term, say some economists, but maybe lacking in the long term. We've got to focus on strategies like the emphasis being placed on small business growth, entrepreneurial development that creates new wealth. The best thing that ever happened to me in life was getting fired. It's that teach a fisherman how to fish idea that New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg is seizing on. His city is offering classes on how to become entrepreneurs. 200 people applied for just 27 spots. It's not just about like creating something that's uh, like a job for me now, but really just carrying a career, something I can look forward to. Homegrown solutions to an economic crisis that Main Street hopes to fix one street at a time. Lee Cowan, NBC News, Lancaster, California. And that's our broadcast for this Monday night. Thank you for being with us. I'm Brian Williams. We, of course, hope to see you right back here tomorrow evening. Good night. Tomorrow. A brutal attack by a pet chimpanzee almost killed her. Now, the exclusive story of her miraculous survival on Today on NBC.